Welcome to the Happy Black Woman Podcast, the show for ambitious black women who want it all. I'm your host, Rosetta Thurman, and my mission is to educate, inspire, and empower black women all over the world to create amazing lives and successful businesses. As a mindset coach and business mentor, I teach you how to achieve your big goals faster than you ever thought possible. And if you're ready to transform your mindset, get out of your own way, and become the woman you know you were meant to be, you are definitely in the right place. Now let's get into the show. Hello and happy Monday to all of my happy black women here in the tribe. Today, I'm excited to bring to you a brand new live stream topic and training. And it's all about some of the biggest mistakes that we as black women entrepreneurs make when we are building our businesses. So I recently got back from our launcher business live bootcamp in Atlanta. It was my fifth, my final, and dare I say my best, because it was really all about telling the truth about entrepreneurship, telling the truth about what it takes to be successful in business. And the truth will set you free if you let it in. So today is all about some truth. I'm bringing that same energy that we had in Atlanta to this training today. And I will um, definitely want to hear your thoughts and what you um, are thinking about around this topic. I want to know what's resonating with you, what's coming up for you, and of course, what questions you have. So again, welcome to the live stream today. And our topic is four mistakes that sabotage black women in business. Four mistakes that sabotage black women in business. Now, I'm going to go through these mistakes, and I want you to be honest with yourself and see where you can um, really make some changes in how you show up in your business and, of course, how you show up in your life because it's all the same. It's life. It's business. You are one woman living one life, and it's all connected. So I'm going to dive right in. So um, number one mistake that I see a lot of new black women entrepreneurs making a lot of the times and not even just new, but even if you've been um, in business for a while, this is something that has come up in my coaching with black women entrepreneurs over the years. Number one mistake is not telling the truth about what you want, not telling the truth about what you want, not being honest with yourself about what you really want. When it comes to business and money, a lot of times we can feel guilty about wanting a lot of money in our business. Imagine that. How can you be guilty about wanting money in your business when that is essentially the whole point of having a business (laughs) is to make money? Um, And of course, to make a difference in all that. But What I found in coaching so many black women entrepreneurs is that we tend, because we have been socialized to help and be the helpers of the world, um, we want to treat our businesses like nonprofits and you want to help everybody even when they don't have any money or you want to build your business around helping people who don't have money because you haven't been honest with yourself that yes, you do want to make money. Yes, you do want your business to provide for you and for your family. So the number one mistake I see black women entrepreneurs making is not telling the truth about what you want. You have to be honest that yes, you want to make money in your business. Yes, you want your business to provide um, revenue and resources for your lifestyle. You want your business to provide a house for you. You want your business to provide um, a nice car. You want your business to pay for your kids' um, college tuition or their private school. You want your business to pay for trips around the world so you can travel and maybe even take your family to Disney or wherever you guys want to go. So as long as you're not telling the truth about that, the fact that you want to make some great money in your business, um, the harder it is for you to make great money in your business. If you are sitting here saying, well, I'm not in business to make money, then you won't make money. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with making money. And of course I could do a whole 
um, three-day conference on money mindset as it relates to Black women entrepreneurs because we have been socialized to um, not want a lot, to not expect a lot out of life. And that is not what the philosophy of a happy Black woman is. To be a happy Black woman, you have to own your desires. You have to be honest with yourself and say, yeah, I do want to make some great money. I do want to have... Um, replace my salary. I do want to have a six figure business. Eventually I want to have a seven figure business. I want to be a black woman millionaire. You have to declare that you have to say yes to that before it will come to you. So if you have been making the mistake of not telling the truth about what you want, which is abundance, you get to do that now. And so what I recommend is that you get out your journal and you write out in your journal what you really want what you really, really, really want. Yes, you want to help people. Yes, you want to make a difference. We all do. We all want to be walking in our purpose. However, that doesn't mean that you have to be broke. That doesn't mean that you can't make great money in your business and have nice things and um, have a beautiful home and, um, you know, dress well and get your hair done and your nails done um, and uh, really enjoy the abundance that comes along with being successful. So tell the truth about what you want. Stop hiding it. Be honest with yourself. You do want nice things. You do want to make great money. And when you uh, do that, it'll start to come to you. All right. So that was number one. So not telling the truth about what you want. And I hope that you'll start to do that today. At least be honest with yourself. All right. Number two. Oh, this is a big one. <laughs> this is a big one that came up a lot um, at the event. So the number two mistake that black women make that sabotage their business success is trying to fit in with people who will never be successful, trying to fit in with people who will never be successful. And when, what I mean by that is this concept that um, was developed by Tony Robbins. He talks about the six human needs. We all have, you know, human needs. And one of our needs is to belong, to fit in, um, and to have significance. And what many of us do is we try to fit in and belong and have significance by struggling, by being on the struggle bus and sitting at the struggle table with other people who are not going to be successful and they're not doing what it takes to be successful. So because you want to be liked, because you want to fit in, because you want people to pat you on the back and tell you how, you know, how you're trying to make it, you make yourself less than you shrink yourself. You hang out with people who are like, girl, I don't know what I'm doing in my business. And you're like, girl, I don't know either. No, I'm good and well, you do have a plan. You do have a vision, but you're trying to fit in with the people who are not doing much with their lives and their businesses. But you're trying to fit in with people who aren't making money and who'll never make any money. Um, you're trying to fit in with people who are never going to do what it takes to be successful. You're trying to get significance sitting at the struggle table, and that's the table that no successful person will ever be sitting at. That's not the table that Oprah's going to be at. That's not the table that um, investors are going to come sit at. That's not the table that people are going to be sitting at when they're trying to make moves and, uh, and, and make things happen. You want to be sitting at the table with the successful people. Even if you don't feel like you fit in yet, it's better than, you know, hanging out with people who are complaining about how hard it is and how people ain't got no money and the economy and President Trump and all those things that bring you down. They're negative Nellies and they're not going to help you move forward in your business. So stop trying to fit in with them. Stop trying to get significance with your struggle. Stop trying to get attention with your story about how hard it is and instead start hanging out with people who have figured it out. Start hanging out with people who are not willing to let their circumstances hold them back. Um, this is really your opportunity to stop making the mistake that so many women make, which is um, being afraid of their own success. 
don't be so afraid of your own success that you're willing to be dragged down by the people who have no intention of getting anything done. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody who is uh, always talking about trying to start their business, trying to um, get things done, trying to make things happen? Girl, I'm trying to get this website together. I'm trying to get these clients, you know, they're, they're only talking about it. Because when you say you're trying, that means you ain't doing nothing. If you're doing it, you would say you're doing it, right? So stop trying to get significant and fit in and belong with people who will never be successful because they are comfortable at that struggle table. They are used to riding on that struggle bus. And you need to be around different types of people, different kinds of people who are on the road to success. Stop trying to be liked by the wrong people, all right? That's mistake number two. I'll recap these um, at the end for those of you just jumping in. All right, mistake number three is making it too hard and making it take too long. All right, making it too hard and making it take too long. I cannot tell you how many women I've coached and how many women I've mentored and how many women have come to my events who have been trying, there's that word again, trying to launch their business, trying to get their business off the ground, trying to get clients for years, for years. Why do you think it is that some people, they can launch their business within a few months and have clients um, well, some people, they just don't seem to get it. It's just not clicking. Y'all remember that movie, um, uh, life with, uh, Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy. And they had the, um, they had the character can't get right. <laughs> Why does some people just seem like they just can't get right? They just can't get right. You know, it's been years and years and years. And for some reason, they can't seem to figure out how to, how to, uh, launch the website. It's taking you a whole year or three years to figure out how to use WordPress to the point where you got a website up there. Those are people who are making it too hard and making it take too long, longer than it has to be, harder than it has to be, right? So you do not have to be, can't get right, <laughs> making it making it so hard and making it take so long where it's just like, you, you just can't get it right. It's not that you can't get it right. It's that you are making it too hard. You are making it take too long. If other people can do it quickly, why can't you? If other people can get out of their own way and just start now and improve later, why can't you? You are trying to be a perfectionist. You're trying to get everything right the first time when you don't even know what you don't know. You are unwilling to put yourself out there even when you know things might be looking a little rough. And that's one of my um, keys to success. I put myself out there 10 years ago. I launched my first business, which was a nonprofit consulting business. And I had an ugly little blog. I didn't really know how to create a website. I um, didn't know how much to charge. I didn't have contracts or anything like that. I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew is that I wanted to help people. I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to make some money along the way. And I figured it out just like so many successful entrepreneurs do. You figure it out along the way. You don't try to wait until you have all of the answers before you take action because that makes it hard and that makes it take longer than it has to take. One of the, um, the references I made at the event was let's learn from our sister Lauren Hill, right? She has the song. Um, she has the song with the lyrics that says, um, it could all be so simple, but you'd rather make it hard. <laughs> it could all be so simple, really, but you'd rather make it hard again, because you are afraid of your own success. You are afraid of you showing up in your power. You're afraid of your own power because you know, if you did what you were supposed to do, you would be successful and your life would change. It would be different. You would have money instead of talking about being broke. You would have clients instead of complaining about how people don't want to pay. You would actually have something that you can be proud of, which a lot of people don't have. A lot of people do not have. So um, stop being so afraid of the unknown and making it so hard and making it take so long because you are afraid of what might happen if you actually let yourself be successful. Instead of, instead of wondering and being afraid of the unknown, just 
see what happens, right? If you make the unknown known, there's no longer anything to be afraid of. So every time someone says, well, Rosetta, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's find out. That's what I always tell my clients. Let's find out. Let's find out what it would be like for you to be successful. Let's see what it feels like. Let's see what it looks like so you can stop being so afraid of it and feel how good it feels to walk in your purpose, to feel how good it feels to get paid to help other people and do what you love and really make an impact in people's lives, whether you're a speaker, a consultant, a trainer, a coach, uh, um, a teacher, uh, teaching online courses, hosting live events and retreats, um, really getting yourself out there so that other people can learn from your expertise and your knowledge and your experience. Go see what it feels like. You don't have to make it so hard. You don't have to take a year to put your website out there. You don't have to take six months to figure out what your package and your pricing is. It doesn't take, you know, nine months to get a Facebook page up and to start your Facebook group or to start your podcast or your blog or whatever it is that you want to do to market yourself. It does not need to take that long. It can happen in a few days at the maximum, right? What I do is I help my clients launch their businesses and get their first clients within 90 days or less. I have had women get started with me and in just a few weeks they have launched and gotten their first client because they made a decision that it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to take a long time. If you have a belief that you're choosing, this is a belief. You choose your beliefs, by the way. You get to choose your beliefs. You, if you're choosing to believe that it has to be hard and that it has to take a long time, then it will. And you will be right here in the same place next year, April 2019, talking about, girl, I'm still trying to figure out my website. Oh, I am too. You're still going to be sitting at the struggle table a year from now if you keep making it hard and making it take so long. You can bend time and space and make things happen quickly when you want to. There's nothing more powerful than a black woman who has made up her mind. And that's what I want you to be. A black woman entrepreneur who has made up her mind that it's not going to take a long time. That it's not going to be hard. She's going to put herself out there. Um, and not make everything have to be perfect and not beat herself up for not knowing everything because no one knows everything, especially in the beginning. You don't know what you don't know. So you just have to take action based on what you want, based on what information you have right now. If you keep waiting and waiting and waiting, you missed out on so much money. <laughs> That's the first thing. You miss out on so much money. You miss out on so much abundance. You miss out on so much opportunity. When I first started my business, um, I first launched my, my first business in 2008. I made $10,000 on the side without knowing what I was doing, you know, and while I was still working a full-time job. $10,000 extra a year can be life-changing for so many women. And that was me not knowing what I was doing, doing it part-time on the side, um, not knowing how much to charge, but just going out there and doing speaking and workshops and um, doing consulting and coaching, just really showing up for whatever people were asking me to do. And I made 10,000 extra dollars. If I had not launched my business back then, I would have missed out on at least $10,000 a year. So you do the math. How many years have you been making it so hard and making it take so long to the point where you haven't even launched the business? You haven't even really done much to grow the business. If you've been, if you have been procrastinating for three years, you've already missed out on at least $30,000. That I can tell you. If you've been um, getting in your own way for the past five years, you've missed out on at least $50,000. Because if I could do it without knowing anything um, and make $10,000 extra in a year, I know you can. I know you can. So if you've been wanting to build your business for 10 years, you've missed out on at least $100,000. That could have been a down payment on your dream home. That could have been uh, your dream trip around the world already. 
you could have done that already. You could have made the money already. You could have had, um, you know, a big chunk of money in your retirement fund right now. You could have already paid for your kid's college right now. You could have paid off your student loans by now, right? The longer you make it take, and again, it's a belief that you have, the longer you continue believing that it has to take a long time, it will. And you will miss out on a lot of money. You will miss out on a lot of opportunity. So you get to decide. Today, I'm going to stop making it so hard. And I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to put my website out there. I don't care if it's not fancy. I'm just going to put my packages and my pricing out there. I don't care if I feel like maybe it's, it's, um, it's not perfect, right? You get to start making money even with the ugly website. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I made money with the ugly little website. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I had skills, of course, just like you. I had experience. I had talents. I had passion just like you, but the difference between me and you is not that I'm better than you or I know more than you. So many of the women in our happy black woman tribe have kids who are my age. I'm 35 years old. (laughs) You know, there's so many of you who have years and years of experience, but you're just not monetizing it because you're making it way too hard than it has to be. So if one of the things I can help you do is to prevent you from leaving all that money on the table. That's what I want to (laughs) do. The longer you make it take, the more money you leave on the table. And that money could be doing so much for you and your family and your community. If you just stop making it so hard, right? It could all be so simple, just like Lauren Hill said, but for whatever reason, you'd rather make it hard. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that we make as black women entrepreneurs. All right. Finally, number four, the number four mistake I see black women making in business is being afraid and refusing to invest in your dream, being afraid and refusing to invest in your dream. I talked to so many women who are taking the safe route or trying to take the safe route in business without having to spend any money. So they're trying to do all the free stuff and they're trying to get by on a shoestring when the truth is they have big dreams and big goals. If you want to have a six figure business, you have to invest in yourself like a six figure business woman and a six figure business woman doesn't look for ways to avoid paying PayPal fees or um paying money for your email marketing service because if you're making 8 to 10,000 dollars a month which is what a six figure business looks like a six figure business is making between 8 to 10,000 dollars a month right your first 100,000 dollars a year it's going to be um 8 to 10,000 dollars a month um And to do that, you're going to have to make some investments. If you're so scared to invest in your business and you refuse to um, put money into your dream, then how are you ever going to get there? How are you ever going to get there by penny pinching and acting like, um, you know, a four figure business? There's so many women who aren't even making a thousand dollars a month because they don't want to pay the money for their email marketing service. So they can't send out emails, which would make them money. Um, They uh, refuse to pay for different um, tools in their business where they can not only collect email addresses, but um, have a plugin on their website where they can have someone enter in their email and um, their phone number. Um, They refuse to pay for services that allow them to schedule appointments, you know, with clients, potential clients. So you're going back and forth over email and people get so frustrated. They just don't email you back when you just could have given them a link where they can schedule a call with you. They refuse to um, invest in their training and mentoring and coaching. So again, you're just walking in the wilderness with all these other entrepreneurs who don't know what they're doing because you refuse to get help. And you think By the end of 2018, you're going to be able to quit your job or make $100,000. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. If you refuse to invest in your dream, you're not going to get very far. 
And all you have to do is ask other successful black women entrepreneurs, ask them, did they get to where they are by um, not spending any money? Did they get to where they are by only going after the free resources? Did they get to where they are um, with keeping a zero budget? No, 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 no. Nobody ever got where they are um, by refusing to invest in themselves. So let me give you a couple of tips that may blow your mind. <laughs> I've talked to so many women who refuse to get a business credit card or a business loan because they were told that you're not supposed to have debt. And the truth is that there, there's good debt and there's bad debt. There's good risks and there's bad risks. And as an entrepreneur, you're going to have to learn how to take good risks and how to get in good debt. Um, there are many women entrepreneurs who are still trying to scrimp and save to invest in the course that they need or the software that they need or the mentoring and training that they need. And to be honest, a lot of those investments are thousands of dollars. So you're trying to put together two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 by scrimping and saving a little bit here and there. By the time you save up enough money to make that investment, the opportunity is going to be gone. It's going to be 2020. It's going to be 2020. Why would you put your business dreams on hold for two years because you refuse to get business credit or business loans like the rest of us? There's nothing special about you <laughs> where you're going to make it without investing money like everybody else. You don't get to bypass the risk that every other entrepreneur had to take. That's not how you be successful. That's not how you become successful. And I've invested at so many levels. I started out investing hundreds of dollars in courses because I didn't know what I didn't know. And I had to learn how to make money as a speaker. I was speaking, but I wasn't making the kind of money I wanted to make. So I went to someone who knew how to do that. And I had to make an investment. It costs money to learn from the best. It costs money to learn from people who know what they're talking about. It doesn't cost very much money to learn from people who are walking in the wilderness just like you, which there's a lot of people who are. They're walking in the wilderness, acting like they got it together, faking it until they make it, and you try to do what they're telling you to do, and it doesn't work because they have not walked the walk. They're just talking the talk. So if you really want to get the support that you need, you're going to have to make an investment. I've invested... Um, well over $200,000 in to my business, which is why I've made six figures um, consistently over the last five years, over the last four years. Um, and I, in those years, I had a seven figure year. How do you think you get to a million dollars in revenue? Is it by refusing to pay for an email marketing service like AWeber or um, Infusionsoft, which is what I use? No, you got to pay. There's expenses that go along with having a successful business. Do you get away with not paying PayPal fees? No, we all have to pay credit card processing fees. It's part of doing business. If you're making eight to ten thousand dollars a month, do you care about the? the charges that you have to pay? No. Do you care about the money you have to pay to get training? No. Do you care about how much you have to pay a coach? No. Do you pay about, uh, do you care about how much it costs to have an email marketing service? No, they're all costs of doing business and investing into your dream. So, um, I talk to women all the time who are like, uh, yeah, well I will invest in my business once I start making money. And that is the biggest <laughs> the biggest mistake that you can make when it comes to your, your business finances, because if you knew how to make money, you'd already be making money. Obviously you don't know how to make money. So you have to pay someone to teach you how to make money. To me, that's a simple concept, right? But I learned that over time. And, um, when I tried to do it on my own and I realized it wasn't working, I got very clear, very quickly. So you also will need to get clear very quickly that, hey, I need help. I'm not making money. I haven't been making money for years. <laughs> so if I want to at least make $10,000 a year, that's like $1,000 a month, I need to get help because I don't know what I don't know. And it is a humbling thing, right? You have to humble yourself and be like, 
I need to be, I need to be a student again, right? I need to learn again. And one of the best things you can do as a black woman entrepreneur is be willing to be a student, be willing to learn what you need to learn so you can make the kind of money you want to make. If you don't even know how to make a thousand dollars a month, how are you going to get to a hundred thousand dollars a year? <laughs> it's just, it's just common sense, right? But sometimes we get so stuck in our head that we forget about common sense. We forget about what really makes sense as a businesswoman. And I, what I do with my clients is I teach you not only the strategies and the tactics and the mindset, but how to really be a smart businesswoman, how to think intelligently, right? How to make decisions based on what really works and what has worked instead of emotion and what you all, well, I always was told not to have debt. Well, you were told that by someone who didn't have a business. <laughs> you were told that by someone who didn't have a successful six figure empire, seven figure empire. And if you start talking to those people, they will tell you the truth about what it takes to have a profitable business. Um, so Angela says, I get frustrated with the learning process. Everybody does, but are you willing to go past the frustration to get to your success or are you going to stay stuck in the frustration and stay sitting at the struggle bus with everybody else who's frustrated and complaining? Oh, I got to pay this. I, well, I got to pay that. I got to pay $20 a month for mine. Well, I got to pay a hundred dollars a month for mine. And Oh, that coach is charging $2,000 to work with her. I ain't paying that. Meanwhile, the people who are willing to invest are making money. They're learning at a faster rate because they got help instead of trying to piece together all these free webinars. And this one is saying you need to do speaking. And this one is saying you need to do Instagram. And this one is saying you need to be on LinkedIn. And you're just more confused by the end of all those free webinars. And if you just paid somebody a few thousand dollars to teach you how to do it right and customize to you, to you customize advice to you, you know, you will waste so much time trying to do it for free because you don't know how to filter through all that free information. Google has millions of um, articles, free articles about how to build your business. You don't have time to read all that stuff. That's why you pay. That's why you invest. That's why I pay. That's why I invest. I ain't got time to be watching all these free webinars <laughs> trying to figure out how to build my business. But I tried it that way. Years ago, 10 years ago, I tried it that way and it did not work for me. And when I started investing in myself and getting the knowledge and the training that I needed, my business started growing so much faster. I started making money to the point where people started asking me, Rosetta, what are you doing? How did you do this? People in the nonprofit world were asking me, hey, I see you're getting paid to speak. How are you doing this? And so what did I do? I started charging for that. That became a new service. I went from doing nonprofit consulting to doing business coaching. And now I'm doing even more mindset coaching because of the fact that so many women are not thinking intelligently about what it takes to be successful. And they think if I just, you know, do all the free stuff, I will be a six figure businesswoman. And that's not the truth. I'm here to tell you the truth because yes, I'm happy black woman, but happiness begins with truth. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. I'm not going to tell you, Oh, you, you only can, you only have to work four hours a week and you only have to spend a hundred dollars a month on your business and you will make six figures. No, I will never tell you that. I'll also never tell you that you'll be able to quit your job right away. It took me two years to quit my job. And that's two years of getting up early, staying up late, right? If you're not willing to do that, then number one, it's going to be very hard for you to get things done in your business, especially if you have a full-time job. So that's why they say entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Everybody's not cut out for it. If you think you're going to save up for two years to pay for a $2,000 course, Entrepreneurship might not be for you because you have to take risks and you have to take risks on yourself. You have to believe in yourself more than anybody else. You have to be willing to make the investment in yourself before other people will make that investment in you. How can you ask your clients to pay you thousands of dollars for your services when you are not willing to pay thousands of dollars to invest in your business? It makes no sense, right? And I'm hoping that the way I'm laying it out for you um, with common sense and with love is just opening your eyes to what's possible for you. 
because again, we get into our heads, we get caught up in, well, so-and-so said this. And if I, you know, spend all this money now, I don't get it back. Like you get caught up in fear and in your head. And then, um, you just start getting in your own way. And so maybe what I'm saying today is hitting you at a different level today and you're taking it in differently. Um, maybe you've heard it before, but you're just now really hearing it, you know, um, and you're realizing that you've been the one sabotaging your own success because you're out here acting like you're ready for people to pay you thousands of dollars. But in reality, you feel like a fraud. You feel like an imposter because you can't afford a coach. You keep telling yourself you can't afford a coach, but you're selling coaching. How does that make sense, right? I love you enough to tell you that it's going to be really hard for you to get coaching clients if you don't have a coach yourself. You've never had a coach. How can you tell people about how beneficial it is to get coaching or consulting when you've never experienced it for yourself? You don't know what it feels like on the other side when a client is considering paying that kind of money to hire you. I can have all kinds of sales conversations with my clients because I know what it's like to be on the other side. If you've never been on the other side of someone asking you to invest $5,000, you don't know what's going on in your client's head. You don't know what it's like to have to move money around from one bank account to another. That's what your clients have to do sometimes, right? But if you've never done that yourself, you don't really know that life. You don't really know that experience. You can't speak to it. You're still faking it until you make it. And a lot of people are trying to do that unsuccessfully. I can't tell you how many women, they look good on the outside, but when I start talking to them, everything falls apart. And don't get me wrong, this is not about being perfect. I ain't perfect, I'll never be perfect. And I don't say, tell my clients, you have to strive for perfection because it's an illusion, it doesn't exist. But what you do have to do is be on the right path of integrity, and, you know, talking to your clients about what has worked for you. If you have never done anything, you can't tell them what has worked for you, right? Your clients are going to be asking you, you know, hey, I really want to work with you, but I don't have the money. You're going to be like, okay, bye. But if you know what you've had to do for yourself to get the money to invest, you're going to be able to have that conversation with your clients, because it's going to come up over and over again when you do your sales calls. I want to work with you, but I don't have the money. Can you, can you give me some ideas about how I can get the money? Yeah, I can because I've invested over $200,000 into my business. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I know a lot of different ways to get money as an entrepreneur because I've had to do it. And I ain't too proud to say that I have taken out loans. I have borrowed money from people. I have gone to people who owe me money and, and asked them to pay me back. I have um, gotten a PayPal uh, working capital loan. I have gotten, um, there's some things I just learned about I had never done. Um, there are some people who use the lending tree. I never, you know, I, I never heard of that one. Um, there's different ways for you to get capital and get money for investing in your business. When you know that you're going to, you're going to eventually have a six figure business, that loan is nothing. Um, you know, having to pay that back is not a big deal because you know, it's going to help you make money. I have had to sell things, right? The first course I bought was $300. I didn't have $300 to do it, but I did what I had to do. You know, I sold things I didn't need. I wasn't using anymore. Shout out to Craigslist, right? Um, you know, you can sell things that you don't need in order to invest in your business. I have reduced my living expenses. I have, um, you know, gotten rid of my apartment and I got a roommate, you know, went to live with a roommate so I can spend, um, invest more money into my business. What else have I done? Um, I've gotten business credit cards. I have several business credit cards. And the thing is, as black people in general, we, we have often had the experience of having, um, financial hardship. So we want to get out of debt. We want to have a better credit score. But at the same time, if the money's not there, it's not there. And so as a business, you have to have money to pay for different things. You have to have money to pay for um, software you might need. You have to have money to pay for advertising. <laughs> if you're going to do Facebook advertising, any advertising, um, you're going to need money for that. 
And by the way, those of you who want to be speakers, you have to have money to pay for your plane ticket to get to the speaking engagement. You have to pay for your hotel. The organization is going to reimburse you for that stuff. You got to have the money up front. I learned that the hard way. I didn't have a business credit card when I first started speaking. And then people started to invite me to speak and okay, I got to go to Denver. Okay. I got to go to Atlanta. Okay. I got to go here and there. And I'm like, okay, how do I pay for all this stuff? I didn't have $700 just sitting there for a flight in a hotel room. I had to get a business credit card. So some of you are going to be leaving money on the table just because you ain't got the money to buy the plane ticket to get there. So you do have to have a business credit card. So um, I know how to talk people through all that stuff. I've had to move money from my savings to my checking, right, um, to pay for things. And it's not a big deal. It's just what successful entrepreneurs have to do because the money is not sitting there. <laughs> We're creating the money by getting the clients. And you have to learn how to do all of this. So um, those are my four biggest mistakes. I'm going to do a recap and give you an invitation. Um, so um, the four mistakes that I shared with you today were number one, um, not telling the truth about what you want and not being honest about the fact that you do want to make a lot of money in your business. Um, number two was... Um, trying to fit in with people who will never be successful. Trying to belong by sitting at the struggle table. That's mistake number two. Mistake number three, making it too hard and making it take too long. Remember our line from Lauren Hill. It could all be so simple, but you'd rather make it hard. And mistake number four was being afraid and refusing to invest in your dream with your dollars, with your money, because if you don't, nobody else will, right? So for those of you who are tired of making these mistakes and you want to really begin taking intelligent action and starting to think like a smart um, entrepreneur, I have an invitation for you. I have a program called Launch Your Business in 90 Days where I walk you through step-by-step -step all of the things you need to do to get your business off the ground and actually start getting paying clients. Tia says it's so much information at a time, it's overwhelming. Yeah, when you're trying to do this on your own, it can be overwhelming. You don't know what to do first. You don't know what to do next. You think you should be marketing when you don't even, when you don't even, know, you don't even, know, even know what's making you um, not have the results that you want. So, um, I would love to talk to you if you're ready to invest in yourself and your business and get the help that you need to move forward in a very smart way. And so in the link, um, to this video, there is, um, a link where you can book your free breakthrough call. And that's where we can talk privately about what your goals are, what's holding you back right now, what's not working for you right now, and really determine if and how I can help you, whether the Launch Your Business in 90 Days program is right for you. Um, you know, that's what we can talk about in your free breakthrough call. So click on the link and schedule your call. I have a few openings for this week and I'd love to speak with you if you're ready. If you're not ready, you know, keep do, watching the, the, the live streams. Hopefully something will click for you at some point, but um, the call is for people who are ready. You're ready to get off the struggle bus, stop sitting at the, I don't know what I'm doing table and, um, and really stop making the mistakes that sabotage your success. Um, let's see. Tiffany says, what do you look for when you pay for someone to help you? There's a few things that I would look for, Tiffany. Number one is, does this person, this mentor, this coach, this trainer um, have the kind of results that you want for yourself? So if you want to make um, you know, $5,000 a month in your business, you should be learning from someone who's making at least $5,000 in their business. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there that may not be making that kind of money. Well, you should be learning from the ones who are making the kind of money that you want to make, right? Because they know what it takes. You don't want to be um, 
you don't want to have a vision for making six figures, but you're working with someone who is barely getting by, right? Someone who's still in their full-time job. If you want to quit your job, you should work with a mentor or a coach who has already quit their job because they know what it takes to get there. And it's, they're not like just regurgitating something that they learned on a webinar or in a course. They've lived it. They've walked the talk. That's the first thing that I look for. Someone who's walking the talk. Not somebody who's perfect in all areas of their life because you'll never find that person um, and you'll never be that person. But what you want to look for is someone who has the results that you want. Someone who has made the money, has quit their job, is living, you know, in a state of freedom, which is those are the things that I care about. I look for someone who has the kind of lifestyle that I want, you know, lifestyle of freedom, not someone who is, you know, always working 24 seven nonstop because if they stop working, they won't make any money. Like I am all about being able to enjoy my abundance, being able to enjoy my life, being able to take the money I made and actually travel and do the things that I put on my vision board. It's my vision board behind me. Right. Um, so if you want to be a speaker, you know, you should be working with someone who has been a speaker before. If you want to be a coach, you should be working with someone who is, you know, just, just looking at what you want to do and finding someone who has already done it. They've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and can write a book about it or has written a book about it. Right. Um, so that's what I look for. And really someone who operates from a place of integrity. There are a lot of people, again, who are out here faking it till they make it. They're saying that they have, you know, I'm not, I try to stay away from negativity. So I'm not here to like call anybody out or like, you know, tell you not to work with, you know, certain types of people. But what I will say is that because of the internet, there's people who are faking it till they make it. They're trying to teach women how to make $5,000 a month and they've never made $5,000 in a year. Right. So, um, use your intuition is what I will say, right? Use your intuition, um, by asking really great questions. Like, do they have a system? Do they have a step-by-step? -step? Are they doing the things that they're teaching? Right. Use your intuition, use your common sense and the right people will be revealed to you. Um, Latoya says, I've taken risks and spent money on my business, but I always end up helping someone else with their business and my execution process sucks. Latoya, you're not the only one. That's what I want to say to you. Um, and you need to make a choice right now today to love yourself enough to put the same kind of attention in your own business that you're putting in other people's businesses. So if your business is not successful, you do not have time to help someone else with their business. Point blank, period. If you're not making money, what are you doing talking to somebody else about how they can make money? You need to love yourself enough to put yourself first, right? And you get to make that choice, Latoya, and everyone else listening, because you're not the only one. All right? Um, don't sabotage yourself and your success by putting your time into someone else when it should be put into you. Um, all right. Let's see. Any other questions? Um, Angela says, it's difficult for me to find people, black women who are doing what I want to do. No, it's not, Angela. Um, you found one. I'm here. I'm not the only one, right? If there's, you, you want to learn from black women speakers, look at black women speakers, look at black women mentors. There are many of us out here who are helping and teaching and sharing. And yes, it will cost money. <laughs> so if there's someone that you want to work with, um, who's done what you want to do, see if they have a program, see if they do coaching, see if they do mentoring. That's what I've always done. Um, <clears throat> you know, from my nonprofit days to my business days to my personal development. through their and it's definitely helped me get to where I am today <clears throat> um, Tiffany says I know you've been in business for a while how many times and how often have you changed your goals or have added Tiffany I don't change my goals until I reach them and you know that could be a whole other live stream about another mistake that black women entrepreneurs make is um, trying to do too many things at one time like if you want to be a coach, then 
Focus on getting coaching clients and stop trying to do 10 different things when you haven't even succeeded at one thing. If you want to be a speaker, focus on getting speaking engagements and stop trying to do nine different things that are not related to that, right? I do not change my goals until I reach them. So my first goal was to replace my salary. I reached that, you know, by doing speaking and consulting and coaching. My next goal was to, you know, hit six figures and I did that, right? And I don't change. I don't switch up every week. I'm doing something different. You know, every month I'm trying out something new. No, I stick with my plan. I stick with my goals and I do what I need to do to get there. And when I have a setback, I, you know, strengthen my mindset. I get the support that I need to get and I get right back on track. And that's what I want for you. So for those of you who are ready to stop struggling, stop making these mistakes, I invite you to schedule a breakthrough call. Click the link in the description of this video. Um, if you're watching the, the re recording, the replay, just click the link in the description and you can schedule a call if you're ready. And if you want to be mentored by me, if you want me to take you step by step over 12 weeks, every week um, you get training, every week you get coaching with me. Um, and it's really geared towards helping you do the right things in the right order to launch your business, to get it off the ground. And it will force you to just keep moving, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not, um, you know, you know, having all the bells and whistles that you want, you can still make money, a lot of money, even if you don't have everything perfect, right? Because none of us have everything perfect, right? So, um, book your breakthrough call. I'd love to talk to you. I have a few slots open this week. And what I'm all about is helping you think like a smart, successful black woman entrepreneur. So I hope to talk to you very soon until next time. Ladies have a beautiful rest of your day. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the happy black woman podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, there are two things you can do. Number one, leave me a rating and review on iTunes. It would mean so much to me and it would help so many more women find the show so they can be inspired as well. Number two, join our private Facebook community where you can meet hundreds of like-minded women from around the world. To join the group, go to happyblackwomantribe.com. And until next time, remember, you can do anything you want with your life and no one can stop you but you.